shall be returning in 19 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, with our uh, special grunge episode. See you soon. Variety Hour, Episode 5. Thank you for joining us. Yeah!
and we're back. And let's kill that audio. There we are. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff Dodge, and thank you for joining our Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. Um, we uh, this is actually episode five, and we kind of seem to be moving into this motif where Trench Digger Productions uh, is putting. They're trying a new thing where it's like every last Tuesday of the month seems to be how they're I don't know we you know we just do what the studio tells us but along with me on my wonderful show I have the fabulous Mr. Steve Fingers Sibila on the bass guitar and Mr. Rockin' Rich Reese on the drums and, and Mr. Steve Fingers Sibila on the bass guitar and well you know he's somewhere in there you can see his fingers there he is yes yes oh yeah that's a handsome man right there um and uh yeah so uh this is uh this is an exciting episode for me i've been planning this for a while and uh my beautiful wife has shorn my locks for this episode for this is our uh our, our tribute to the grunge era, which, uh, well, it's at least my tribute. I, I've kind of just held everyone hostage to go along with this idea. Kind of like the grunge era itself. Right, you know, because you needed to get that cynicism out there of the against the 60s, and we were born. That's Gen X. And I have all sorts... This is, we're essentially talking about uh, this kind of um, 89 to... 94 period. Uh, how old were you for that, Rich? I was like two to six. You were you, so young. You millennials. You have no idea what we went through to build this country. You'll notice for I you. have my iPhone out right now. That iPhone, that iPhone would have been a Sony Walkman tape cassette in our era. But what? Yeah, exactly. And then grunge changed all of that. Um, and in and, and the way grunge and the, you know, it's kind of a weird thing because they like, uh, they attribute it a lot to Seattle, okay? But it's not really Seattle, okay? It's, Portland is a very fundamental upbringing to, to the whole, it, it really started here in Portland, Oregon. Um, in fact, I, you know, I don't want to brag about this, Rich, but... Mm -hmm. um, there's like this one time I was like wearing this particular red flannel shirt in Seattle. Wow. And it was like um, 19, 1990, 89 or something. And uh, right. somebody like try and throw a fish to you or something? Or? Yeah, I was on the dock. I was over there by, uh, uh, what's that whole, uh, the... Uh, Ivers? Oh, the, the beautiful marina thing there. Ah, I can't think of it. What's that restaurant, honey, that we always eat at? The, the Pike Place Market. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, the fish market at Pike Place. Isn't that great? I was at Pike Place. A kid named Kurt says, I dig your shirt. I'm like, cool. And, you know, the rest is history. It comes from Portland, okay? It comes from Portland. Wow. So that's my grunge story for, mm -hmm. you know, and I hope people will learn the truth about all of this. So, uh, moving on that, our last song was indeed, is, is our uh, one of our top commenters, Robert, mentioned. It was uh, The Wipers, a Portland band, uh, featuring Greg Sage. Uh, uh, I was turned on to this uh, song by a, a friend of mine that was a bass player. Uh, I, I had this, Steve and I, Steve got really big in this period. In fact, uh, Steve, didn't you like, Jam with Heat Miser or something at this point? The early 90s? Oh, yeah. That was a, uh, that was, that was a great, great experience. Heat Miser. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I was jamming with nobody, so I, I uh, you know, I ended up hooking up with these uh, cats called Wookie. And uh, Chris Soini was the bass player. And, you know, Let's do something funky here. I'm going to go ahead and show us what I was doing in about 1994 in a band called Wookie. And we were like uh, trying to uh, create the sci-fi 
uh, grunge genre. Sci-fi grunge, I think is what we were going for, but uh, yeah, here it is, anyway. Is Richard Dreyfuss in the audience? I guess not, that's okay. You know, he never shows up to our stands. He always does his coming, but he never shows up. Yeah, exactly. Richard Dreyfuss, Louis McGregor, all those old things. Close Encounters, Close Encounters. Terry Gar. Oh, the macro. Blow my mind away, Terry Gar. <laughs> You know, the funniest thing about all this is that I actually, I believe we have, yep, 
Yep, that's right. The the interns told me that we have the lead singer, uh, Mr. Mr. Nad. No, Dan. Dan, is that you? That's, that's me, yeah. Hi. Dan, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, uh, I live in uh, Los Angeles now. Um, and uh, anyways, it's a hot night. I uh, give a uh, cool Portland town a call and check in on you guys. And, you know, just... Uh, you had questions about the grunge era? Well, I was there. And I was there. Um, I was, uh, you know... How, how old were you? I was, uh, well, 21. 20, 21. A wow. lot of people at this time, uh, you know, people were changing scenes. And, uh, at the time, I was uh, I was in Monmouth. So people would think, oh, oh, you know, Salem. And, Monmouth, or, is that by Cleveland? No, Monmouth is more like by, uh, by like, uh, like Rick Real and stuff like that. Okay, Dallas. okay. Well, you know, yeah. our, uh, I, I think uh, our drummer, Rich Reese, was in uh, Salem during this time. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was your grunge influence? Just, you know, real quick, I wanted to point out that I did raise my hi-hat up here once he reminded me that it is grunge night. So my hi-hat is now about 18 inches higher than my snare drum. That's that's amazing. Right. I just wanted to be true to the era. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And you know, all you uh, kids out there watching, you know, ages uh, like nine months to um, seventy three, right. that's what grunge was about. Is you can go from hi hat up. Because we're saying something, you know, we're saying screw you MTV, screw you. We don't need your right. MTV to, yeah. you know, plus, we just want to watch reality then, TV, Kardashians. <laughs> what, what do you say, Dan? You, back then you could make your own clothes, or you, you, or you bought clothes, but when you bought clothes, like I, um, going from like the 80s and into the 90s, I, I had what people would call knickers, or they looked like jams, and my jams eventually, like I, I, you know, leader hosen or something, or no, well, no, just like jams, and uh, I, I was wearing those, and and uh, anyways, uh, they were like uh, blue and uh, with like a gold stripe on them. I remember, and, you know, and you know, what what made you guys hire me as your guitarist? Um, well, I was thinking about it, and because um, Steve was out there jamming with Heat Miser, and I, I decided to jam with you guys instead. Yeah, well, the, the, I'll tell you why. Um, we, uh, you know, I remember having this conversation. I think it was with you. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's it was it was uh, you know what uh, Scorsese's Doors movie had come out of just a few years, you know earlier or something or maybe just around the same time and then and that's that whole scene of you, you know the doors um, movie right yeah right so, so you, you got morrison though you, right? you not only morrison. have morrison you have val kilmer and oliver right. stone doing weird but, shit but but Can I say you know shit? which this, all right? but, but you, you got you got morrison and he's looking not looking at the audience and it's just like and you said to me you said Man, you can do this shit. <laughs> you can you can do this shit. You don't even have to look yes. at the audience. You can just do this shit. Yes. And you know, you got songs, you got stuff, you got you know you uh you know, you you're a working class here, you got kicked out of college, you know, you you got some stories here to tell right. it's just like and then uh I, well and, and of, see i feel like you, the way i remember it is you weren't quite convinced from the doors movie alone i remember no. it as seeing uh jr pella of uh this band called uh not completely grocery uh what were they called uh drunken abbeys drunken drunk abbeys, abbeys yeah, playing at abbeys, belmont's yeah. oh what a God, great yeah. freaking oh, band yeah. Great freaking yep. band. And uh, J.R. Pella, who I, I, I got the privilege of, of meeting in person not too long ago, he still rocks it, doing his thing in Portland. Um, but he, uh, that was an amazing band. And uh, uh, I, I was telling you that is, is a fallback. I was like, look, you can do that, Dan. You can do that. And then what's crazy about this is this. Believe me, you bring, can do you, that. You bring it, bring it up, then you, then you talk to it. Well, I'm, I'm going to just mention another just not to name drop here, but Clint Sargent, though. I Clint Sargent. Really? And Clint Sargent, who... It sounds time, familiar. 
you, well, you, you, you remember him, I'm sure, but it's, it's been a while. I, Anyways. I don't know, man. I mean, I've met so many people. It's like this, you know, <laughs> what? Like, wait, wait. Is wait, it this painting you, rings you, a bell. This painting right. kind of rings a bell. Anyway, what are you saying? Anyways, but, you know, you had the groups like, uh, I remember Jollymon, right? Jollymon. Jollymon, they're back together. Jollymon is Jolly. back together so, so doing Jolly Mon, it. He, but it. then I remember uh, Mr. Sargent, he went off onto his own for a while, and there was this great band that he had, this little solo project called Water that I just loved. Yes, yes, and with Carrie like, from Jollymon, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and it was, it was absolutely beautiful. It was around that time that I also met Derek. Yes, you know, and it's just uh, like, the talented yeah. Mr. E is we yes, know. exactly, Mr. and it was just e. very, very, very different world. And like uh, you know, this is this is back this is back when Sibula, if it goes by Sibula anymore, back when Sibula was sporting a, you know, a big fro of hair, big fro what? of hair, almost. I I fro. don't know such a time. I mean, we uh, big, a big, big fro, fro of hair. A big fro of hair. And I remember mustache. something about Park Rose. Something about well, Park Rose happening. Sure, sure. I'm not, you know. Anyways, a lot of 38 you, special. And, well, uh, yeah, that's, you know. Can but all easy sing time. together, my oh my. Yeah, but, you know. Oh, no, no, you're talking about Slade. Oh, Slade. I love Slade. Yeah, that's Slade, Slade, Slade was a big, good uh, influence. Anyways, but, you know what? I'm, I'm, di I'm digressing here. You, you guys should play some music. Well, I, I was like just going to say we, we need to take a commercial break here, but can, can we hold you over for the break, Dan? Is that I'd, cool? I'd love, I'd, yeah, I'd love to. Okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to pay some bills. We're going to hold Dan over for the break of our grunge episode, okay? And let's, uh, let's pay a few, few bills here uh, with the little of uh, that. Yeah. Danny is still there. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, I'm here. So, uh, yeah, Rich, did you have any questions or Steve that you wanted to ask Dan, uh, formerly lead singer of the band Wookie, what? a grunge sci-fi band project we did about '94, '95. Yeah, this is before we we wanted. I think everyone was. One in the new Battlestar Galactica, but that just didn't happen. I, I'd like to point out this is also a very unpopular time for George Lucas's empire. It was, uh, uh, you know, kind of the doldrums. No one really heard anything uh, other than... I think the last movie he'd make at that point was that made-for-TV Ewok special, wasn't it? No, no. It was the, it was the beginning of the re-release and stuff like that. It was like... Here, oh no 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 no! Wookie predated the re-release shit. Hell yeah! Really? There okay, was well. nothing going on in ninety four, ninety five. Yeah. <sighs> Lucas was talking like American Graffiti Part Seven or something. Oh, yeah. we're live. We are live. Okay. Um, live. So yeah, we're, we're any questions about this um, majestic being who lives in Los Angeles now? Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles. Uh, is he the one in California, or is he the one in South Patagonia? Can you answer that? Oh, wow, that's a... Uh, um, I'm in California. Okay. He's CIA. He's you know, post-grunge there, I apologize. Yeah, it's uh, You know, but then everything old is new again. So, 
That's right. Well, you know, uh, Dan, we, everything new is old again, I we, should say. We, we the others. I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm going to, and we thank you for joining us, and uh, we're going to really move right along. I appreciate it, and uh, as, uh, you know, we used to tell everybody uh, back then, you know, uh, I think it, 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 somebody else sings it now, but, uh, you know, no guts, no glory. Oh, yeah, so, that's a great tune. That's a great anyways, tune. Anyways, that's a good one. And, and then, uh, you know, but anyways, some crazy lyrics, wonderful time. And if you can get Sony on the phone, you should. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, thank you for calling, Dan. You know, you have a there's a guy that calls in occasionally called Nad. Just wanted to say that sure. these guys sound identical. You guys sound identical. But uh, I'm going to let you go. We'll uh, hopefully uh, talk to you again soon. And uh, let's take a look at this uh, this last clip I have from Wookiee's Past. I, I think it's us doing a cover song of a Quiet Riot song, maybe. But uh, uh, this goes out to, uh, to you, Adam and Lisa, and happy anniversary. Okay, here we go. Since one of uh, 
trench diggers, big uh, mainstays has been this band called uh, 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 Moses and the Firstborn. We we got the chance, Scott. Scotty P and I to do some videos on them and uh, they got a new album out right now but um, you want to talk about grunge this is probably uh, an example of, of, of you know here we are 20 years later or more and uh, and and the kids these guys are from from they're Dutch and and they're pumping out great tunes they're great songwriters um, so uh, this is one that we really enjoyed it's called blood sucker and we hope you enjoy it Thanks for joining us.
finest decorative squash store in the region. At my store, you'll find orange, pale orange, and even yellow striped decorative squash. And of course, we have pumpkins. Decorative squash look great in any house, on mantles, lined up on window sills, on porch steps, in kitchens, really anywhere. We have lots of books with decorating ideas. Learn to grow your own decorative squash. We have books about that too. Plus, all kinds of supplies to get you started to grow your own crop. This year, we had a tremendous growing season. We're all excited to be able to offer for sale some of the finest examples of decorative squash for your home decorating needs. We're downtown, across from the Gimler Fountain, or you can call us at 555-1611 if you just want to chat. Hello, Dot's Decorative Squash, Dottie speaking. And, uh, and it sounds like we're back. Oh, the, the, the techs around here keep leaving the audio monitors up and it messes things around. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in. I'm Jeff Dodge and this is the Peasant Revolution Band and you are watching our special grunge edition, a celebration of, of all that is grunge and uh, all that isn't grunge. Um, and, you know, that, that gets to a point. So I, I feel like we've sort of been taking a path here about how, like, the wipers sort of influenced uh, the Seattle sound a lot of ways in the early 80s. And, and grunge, from my understanding, was sort of uh, when punk rock met heavy metal. And, and there was a lot of metal going on in the 80s, and there was a lot of punk rock. But grunge was kind of when the two forces came together uh, I don't know how or why exactly. And then there was also experiences with the black community, too. Uh, did you ever see any of the stuff that Ice-T was doing? Ice-T had this thing, Body Count. That was the name of it, Body Count. I'm getting my skepticism there on the combination, because I happen to be thinking, like, this grunge is a you know, merging of punk and metal. I mean, what an opportunity for the men of your generation. It, it was. It yeah. was. And, and we finally were like... You know, I knew in the 80s, like, there's all these kind of haircuts and short hair and, you know, this and that. But, like, you know, the mullet came out of grunge. Or it was sort of like grunge was almost a reaction to the mullet, was my thought process on the whole thing. Sure. You know, that was... <laughs> the, the mullet, or it, it, some parts of the country, they call it the moulet. The moulet. Um, but uh, I, I, I sort of have a, a prototype of it here. It was essentially you would you would cut all the. It was it was about party in the front. Well, party was in the back, and, and business was in the front. That's what the old saying was: business in the front, party in the back. You know, that's what they'd all all the people that were um, older than us and snorting a lot of cocaine. They'd tell us things like that, and they were really into the mullets. Um, more so than my generation. And I think grunge was kind of like the breaking down of, of the mullets and, you know, there was... Uh, 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 well, let's, let's just get into it. There was, uh, there was Kurt Cobain, um, who became a, a major uh, spokesperson, um, not only for the generation and, uh, and grunge music and rock and roll idol and stuff, but I think he was a spokesperson for Pendleton, wasn't he? Did he work for Pendleton at all? Does anyone know that? I, you might be thinking of the Beach Boys. Oh, Wilson. Brian Wilson. I'm sorry. They were, you know, they... I just heard this, you know, while you guys were getting high. I was out front listening to NPR. The Beach Boys were all... Get, I, I just want to interject here and make sure that everyone understands we were getting high on life. Well, no shit. I just didn't have room for that positivity in my head right then. You right. guys were doing your cheers, right. and I, I couldn't handle it. Anyway, heard this article on NPR, and the Beach Boys were almost originally called the Pendletones. Mm -hmm. And that would have taken grunge back, I mean, almost a previous 30 years to what we're given a credit for here. 1961 as opposed to 1991 but I think well no 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 you have a point there because I, I saw this the Hendrix Museum had this thing about this like Spokane band um, called the Sonics have you heard about them yeah the Sonics yeah they're supposedly the first garage band right but they were too fast so like when they would fly over there'd be these 
huge booms and windows would break and um, they could only land in certain air wait I think you're thinking of the Seattle Supersonics and yeah. the kind of carnage that Sean Kemp and Gary Payton when they came to town that kind of stuff there's a lot right. of lost stories well, not well, Payton as much as Kemp you're but. talking about a period where if you were a normal civilian and you wanted to see the Blazers you would have to wait until they were playing in Seattle and go up and see them there because it was only the elites could get into Memorial you know and, and you know Rich that, that brings me to a very important point I'd like to talk about some certain conspiracies while we're on the subject of uh, the Blazers and Kurt Cobain sure. And we are back, and right. that damn intern keeps leaving the audio up. No, that's okay. I would like to point out um, one of our uh, our great listeners, Katie, pointed out that uh, uh, Rich, his mic was kind of quiet, so we've we've hopefully made the proper adjustments. And thank right. you, thank and you so we, for watching. We, we missed out on some of my pandering, and uh, wanted to point out that I observed that. You know, sort of the the blending of punk and heavy metal as Jeff describes grunge was a real opportunity for the men of America about five to ten years older than I anyway let's get back to some conspiracies here I happen to think World War two was just a conspiracy between the allies to take over the Axis powers the allies to take over the Axis powers. Yeah, they just conspired to defeat the Axis powers. Like like in Axis and Allies, when you've got an industrial complex built in, um, like, Paraguay? Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? There's an industrial complex in Paraguay? I thought there was, like, a special rule you can use that on, but um, maybe I'm getting it mixed up with I, risk. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, um, the, uh, uh, yeah, so grunge and conspiracies, my conspiracy theory, Rich, mm -hmm. is that <clears throat> there's these stories about, about Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, um, well, okay, well, here's one conspiracy, they, you know, some people say they, like, met in, in a country club or something like that. But I heard, I heard they met in Portland at the Satyricon. Like, in the... <laughs> it, did you ever get a chance to go to the Satyricon? I know, Steve, you and I went there, I don't know if ever together that I can remember, but I, I've heard that we were there together a lot. Uh, did you ever go there, Rich? I used to buy heroin on 6th. Like, right around the corner, basically. You see, that's a whole different world. Sixth was, you know, and seventh. It wasn't in seventh? Or was it sixth? The Broadway sixth? is seventh. But, I, I mean, I'm not even a native Portlander. No, no. There's Broadway. a northwest seventh. I stroll it all the time. Over by Guild's Lake. Ooh, now you're pulling rank. Uh-oh, I've... I've I well, revealed right, what era I'm actually my, from. My, my other top conspiracy, of course, Vanport. Yes, Vanport is a good conspiracy. Because all these people, I don't know if you ever heard this one, but another Portland conspiracy is about how all these people got trapped in, in vans in this like port town built by the Kaiser off down by the river. And they flooded out and their vans flooded out. Is that right? Well, Something it was like really good they were in their vans, though, because the vans just lifted right, right up. And, and, and it was amazing, because I don't even remember vans being around in 1948, but I guess this town was loaded with them. Yeah, they looked a little different. Many of them had cloth walls along the back. Okay, but on the other Kurt and Courtney conspiracy I have, um, there's these rumors that this like uh, investigator, uh, our producer was talking about. His name is Grant. Grant. Tom. Grant. Tom Grant. Yeah. Tom Grant. Tom Grant was like the um, the manager of Led Zeppelin, wasn't he? Tom Grant. 
Is that, that right? That sounds about right. It was kind of a big guy. Yes, and, yeah, and he, he would carry he would carry like a cricket thing around and, and whack you. You get him behind a piano, and it's just it's like butter. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's true. That's a he's good. A it's he's beautiful piano. I've done sound for him. Sure. Great piano player. Um, great Led Zeppelin manager, and also involved in this conspiracy somehow with Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain. I don't know what any of it means, but um, thank you for watching Conspiracy Corner, and we'll be back. But uh, we're back, and uh, first, um, let me uh, pay some bills real quick, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be right back. Stop wasting your money at the dollar store, and go to Jimmy Kimler's 97 cent store. I turn my profits from my profitable enterprise, Jimmy Kimler's suit rack, into another thriving business for you to enjoy. Save three cents on every purchase. We have household items, cleaning supplies, auto parts, even steaks. That three cents savings really adds up. Over the course of a year, you have the potential to save a hundred dollars for shopping at my store. That's like me giving you a hundred dollars to shop at my store, which I'm not gonna do, but you're gonna get the money back over time. I was the 1972 Suit Salesman of the Year. I bring my business reputation into every business I have. I think you'll love my 97 cent store and I hope you'll visit often. Live. What about
course, uh, the uh, the song uh, uh, "Lithium" by uh, Nir Nirvana. Nirvana. I used to call them Nirvana because I was kind of um, jealous of them. You know, they, they were like a little older than me and doing a lot better, and they're still doing better even though one of their members isn't even around anymore. Um, but you know, it was cool. I I wanted to. I want to give you a quick, um, I, I worked this up, Rich, for everybody. It's, it's my Kurt Cobain impression. Um, okay, I'm going to try it. Okay, are you guys ready? Everybody ready? It's my Kurt Cobain impression. I've been working for like all months on this. Here, here we go. Oh. Yeah. Uh, your band kind of sucks. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Super good. Does that work? <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's my Kirk coming. Um, we're gonna be wrapping things up with like one more song um, before we uh, next episode. We might discuss discuss with discuss the the uh, uh, tragic end of grunge, or we may never ever bring up grunge again. I don't know this, but but grunge happened. It, it actually, by my count, it died by 96 at the latest. It was pretty much dead. Um, but if you, if you buy my act, Portland, it boomed. And one of the main reasons was this band, Sean Krogan. He had this band called Cracker Bash, along with this other band, Motor Goat. Oh, it was such an amazing music scene in the early 90s here. I, I cannot help but uh, nostalgize about it, and we're gonna try and do a little Cracker Bash song. So is that is is that okay? Is everybody up for a little? Uh, try and do this early '90s grunge Cracker Bash song called Gresham. But uh, but before I do that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I. I'd like to thank thank everybody for uh, coming here and uh, uh, participating for the live part of it. I'd like to thank my, my lovely wife, Jamila, is here, and Jamila Hart Entertainment uh, does wonderful catering here. Um, and uh, I'd also like to thank uh, one, of, one of my favorite mayors, Mayor Charlie Hales. He's not here. Um, we're hoping one of these days to get him. Uh, he's... It's finishing up. Maybe we'll have him as a guest one of these days. So, uh, anyways, but, it, you know, and then I want to thank uh, not only Charlie Hales, but, like, Sam Adams. You guys remember Sam Adams? Oh, yeah. Cats. And there's, like, so, so yeah. many mayors. Tom Potter. So it's been a wonderful evening tonight. What, what are you saying, hey? Music and banter and uh, some conspiracy theories. It's, it's been lovely. Thank you. Thank you. What are you saying? <laughs> Say goodnight, Jeff. Goodnight, Jeff. <laughs>